here. It's good. Okay. Uh, so Jim Kwakikawa U.S. Geological Survey is Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Uh, Fisher 8 is still very active. Uh, fountains, of, fountains are up to 180 feet, uh, but also as low as below the rim of the cone, which is about 115 feet above its base. Um, uh, we've had, uh, we had, we're just ramping up. There was an explosive eruption this morning, uh, of course, at uh, just before five o'clock. Seismicity is ramping up for the next one. Um, hard to say exactly when that'll be because it's become uh, a bit more variable than normal. Um, we also have some new information about the subsidence of the summit crater. Um, parts of it appear to be moving towards the crater and subsiding rather rapidly. Um, the north rim of what was formerly uh, Halemaumau, the old Halemaumau crater, has dropped as much as uh, 40 yards vertically and moved uh, towards Halemaumau. So it, it looks like it's sort of slumping in um, along with the piece that was slumping in from the west earlier. Um, let's see, so lava is, just to jump around a little bit, uh, lava is flowing through the channel, it hasn't, uh, it's, it's fairly full, but it hasn't spilled over today, as far as we know. Um, it goes into the ocean entry, which is uh, simply a point uh, entry right now, it's got a fairly large upwelling offshore, directly offshore of the entry. Um, Some minor activity on Fisher 16 and 18 still, and I think that's it. Any questions? Dr. Jim, can you explain upwelling for folks, especially those who are interested in going out on the lava boat tours who wonder if that's like an inherent additional risk or hazard that they need to be aware of and plan accordingly for? Um, additional risk, you mean to the being out there in the first place? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the upwelling is, we think, is due to lava lava flowing on the ocean floor, and so it's hot in a relatively cool medium. Uh, we think it probably sets up a convection cell right over the lava flow, and uh, you know when you're out there, you can see this patch of relatively calm water that's uh, somewhat circular or elliptical. Uh, right at the moment, it's splitting the uh, the issuance of colored water, if you will, the uh, the stuff that has, uh, you know, the fine black sand particles in it, uh, and it's, uh, the uh, upwelling is right offshore. There are two very distinct uh, colored patches of water that are flowing off the entry around it. Um, is it a greater risk? Uh, it's, it's a little bit cooler than the, the patches of water around it. Um, it's not a huge uh, circulation thing, you know, so um, it probably won't affect Boats, but I'm, I'm not a boat person, so I can't really say that. Thank you. Could Anything you, else? Could you kind of go over again the rim of Halimamao and how, the, how that's being reshaped and, and what the significance of that is? The significance or, of it? Or, you know, you know, I don't know. Any observations about that? But can you explain it again? Which side and how much it's kind of shifting okay, well we're <clears throat> we've been talking about the substance of the summit for quite some time it's been going on for weeks um, it appears to be um, accentuated by the explosive eruptions uh, but in general there's a background of uh, the crater is collapsing the edges are coming in a little bit the floor is uh, subsiding parts of it subsiding rather rapidly uh, the 100 to 120 feet or so, 40 yards of subsidence is of the north rim and is probably of a block that's moving towards the the big uh, puka inside Halemaba, the big hole. Uh, that hole is about a thousand feet deep uh, from the rim of Halemaba, but Hale, the rim of Halemaba itself is probably deeper than it was uh, pre-event. Um, so it's, it's sort of a massive collapse. It's, um, I would say that's pretty significant.
Then on top of that, there are these multiple uh, explosive events. There have been uh, 22 so far. Um, they seem to be settling into somewhat of a pattern, but I hesitate to say that because that's the death knell of patterns usually. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, is so. it conceivable that it all could become, you know, that the puka could just become the whole thing? You know, well, right like now the, the collapse is uh, consuming the edges of Holly Bobo itself while. The floor of Holy Bobo is progressively dropping in. Uh, so about half, roughly half of Holy Bobo has, the floor of Holy Bobo has, has fallen into the crater. The western rem remnant part seems to be sliding into that hole. <coughs> and now it seems clear that the north part is also sliding into, the, into that general vicinity. So this is a major uh, landscape change, if you will. And, uh, you know, big change for significant change to the, the greater Kilo, uh, Kilauea caldera um, floor adjacent to Hale Ma'u Ma as yes. well. Yes. And any immediate uh, potential impact to uh, Jagger and to the HVO headquarters that sit right on the edge there? Um, well, HVO building has been affected by this uh, general subsidence. I, I'm not sure about Jagger, uh, Jagger Museum. <coughs> I know that there has been cracking on the overlook. Uh, but that's about it. That's all I know. Not, not that that's all there is. But, but. Sure. Anything there, else? Yeah, there was talk this morning, I think it was this morning, about the uh, increased SO2 levels and what that might indicate uh, as far as uh, what we're seeing with this eruption. Well, the increase uh, increased SO2 emissions uh, in the lower east drift zone uh, is probably due to an increase in eruption rate. Um, the two kind of go hand in hand. The, um, it's, it's become a little bit clearer what's happening at the summit and it appears that the overall emission rate in between explosive eruptions is a little bit lower than what it was pre-eruption, but that each explosive eruption uh, actually, uh, during each explosive eruption, the emissions become higher for a brief time. So overall, it's, it's a lot of SO2 coming out, and uh, it's in such a way that uh, trade winds kind of collect it all together as it goes around Nalehu and Pahalo and Ocean View Estates and Kona, ultimately. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So there you have it. This is the official USGS scientist sharing the latest Kilauea eruption update. This was a video of USGS given out June 11th, yesterday. And uh, in effect, they're saying that there is an increased rate of earthquakes, which means that it's gearing up for another new eruption. And that there's uh, a lot of SO2 coming out in the beginning of every eruption, and they're waiting for a new one. He's also said that the uh, crater has collapsed and uh, it, their watch and monitoring is ongoing. He states that the lava is flowing regularly through its channels. He does not see that it is spilled over its channels uh, out further and is spilling into the Kapoho Bay area, welling up over there. Besides the full activity of Fissure 8, there's some minor activity in Fissure 16 and 18, he says. He also asks, answers the questions uh, of the people there. One of them was the upwelling in the ocean off of Kapoho Bay, what that was due to, and he explains that's the uh, lava running under the ocean water and creating pools of uh, circular calmer water on top with a temperature difference and uh, creating some kind of different current from the regular cooler sea water, the ocean water off of Kapoho Bay. And you'll see that in about minute two to three in the video, having uh, aerial images of the upwelling off Kapoho Bay. He says that there are two instances of this that they have seen, that they have noticed. 
So this is one of the updates from USGS and we'll keep you updated. Obviously, this man, this geologist reporting to us was uh, very, he's very knowledgeable um, and uh, he looks as if he's very tired, very sleepless, trying to keep an eye out on what is happening with the Kiliway eruptions. So basically, in conclusion, the update here says that there are ongoing earthquakes at Kilauea and that uh, this means that there is an imminent eruption to be taking place in uh, the very near future. So that's what's coming. He did not say how long he expects this to be going on. And obviously it will be continuing as from what they said the end of last week, the beginning of, uh, the, the, well, basically the end of last week. Uh, and we had an eruption on set, uh, Sunday morning um, after the earthquake. So this is still continuing and they predicted it will be continuing for a good couple of weeks.